starting and stopping for the motorist has been greatly simplified by another form of remote control that is engineered into the automobile. Like the gentle twist of a puppet string or the push of a button that sets tons of stage into motion, the automobile driver can put the powerful engine of his car into gear with a slight flip of a finger on a lever. Well, hey there, buddies. So I've had a couple of requests to do a video on the adjustment of the three on the tree manual transmission on these old Chevy cars. Always happy to oblige, so we will tear into that in just a second. However, I just want to give you a note that I know positively the measurements I'm going to give you are correct for 41 to 48. Um, 39 and 40 should be correct also, but I do not have those books in front of me, so I can't verify the measurements. But I seriously doubt they changed from 39 to 41. So, if you have one of those cars, get a manual, make sure for yourself, and as always, if you're doing your work on your own classic Chevy, I always recommend getting a manual before you begin. So I'm going to bill this as 39 to 48. Take that with a grain of salt for the first two years because I just can't tell you 100% for sure that is correct. Well, this just in, the one resource I do have to make a more definite statement on that subject is my 29 to 50 parts, master parts catalog. Um, 40, they've separated out 40 to 48 passenger steering column and 39. There looks to be uh, quite a difference in design. Um, it has very similar parts going on there, but I am betting 39 is going to stand alone as having different measurements at the least. So, hey, if you own a 39 or you know for sure, leave a comment down below. I will um, name this 40 to 48 instead, and we will go from there. Then from 49 to 54, it was very similar but I believe they had an enclosed housing on the column under the hood here. Things worked the same, but it was just a little different and the measurements were very different. Then 55, you get into the Tri-5 Chevy years and beyond that, everything looked quite different. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Let's go into the car and check out our first measurement. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you what I can show you without um, disassembling everything that I don't need to disassemble. Um, I don't know if the steering wheel has ever been off. To the best of my knowledge, it has not. Or the gear shift assembly here on top of the steering column. Those things are operating fine. And if I don't need to mess anything up, I'm not going to. Basically is what I'm saying. So if you've had your steering wheel off, if you've had this assembly disconnected, taken apart, get yourself a manual. There is a procedure for putting that all back together and getting the correct measurements. Now, specifically the steering wheel off, um, this is what they call the mass jacket. And you can measure an inch and a quarter from the end of this, the column tube, to the end of the splines that the steering wheel hook onto and that's inch and a quarter so that's an important measurement the next one they're concerned about is a very oddly specific one is 1 and 27 30 seconds from between the bottom side of the steering wheel to the top or this gap here is what I'm saying you need enough enough swing, enough throw in neutral of your gear shift lever to get to your first and reverse. That was the problem when I started or tried to drive this the first time and it's likely a problem that you may have especially if you've had the uh, transmission out and have been messing with the rods underneath things may have just gotten a little bit out of adjustment from that. So I've got my little machine that's ruler here and I am actually shy um, at least an eighth of an inch, if not a little more, three sixteenths to a quarter. 
27 30 seconds will be the little notch on a 30 seconds graduated ruler less than 7 8 so just a little bit less than 1 and 7 8 is what you want there so now we have to go under the hood and get that adjustment corrected hey here comes Kelly I'll stall him off while you guys get the parts back in yeah. All right, now we want to go after the lower support bracket. And that is this thing, looks like a, the bottom end of a muffler clamp. And we need to loosen the bolts and adjust the gap here between our shift lever and the bracket. We need that at three quarters of an inch and I think I'm a little bit off. Actually, I'm, I'm very close. I could go a little less, though. So just for the sake of doing the thing with you all here. Yeah, you're getting in the way. I don't like that. Say I needed more or less, I forget. I need less. Using a tape measure probably isn't the best either, but yeah. At least a sixteenth of an inch off here, so is looking really good so I will tighten those back down okay now that we've done that we need to turn our attention to our selector rod and I actually went back and remeasured my lever to steering wheel gap, the one in 27 30 seconds. And we're actually right on the money after doing this. But I'm going to try to finish that with you so that you know what to do. Um, I'm going to have to figure out a different way of doing the camera. But just hold on a second. Oh, I was going to show you what pulling in neutral, pulling towards the steering wheel to get to first or reverse does here. So this is just pulling straight back. This is going down to first. This is going to reverse. Back and forth. Now if your measurement inside between the wheel and the lever still is off, don't worry. Mine just happened to fall right into place. We're still going to take care of you. So what I want to do is get the pin, this cotter pin and washer, off right here on the selector rod. Well, I did a job bending those, that's for sure. Okay, our selector rod is loose. Now I want to back off the lock nut here. 
right. I can do that without turning the pivot. Okay, so I got the pivot loose, the lock nut is loose, and basically you want to adjust this thing. You want to adjust the pivot up or down until you have your correct measurement inside. Then once you've got your 1 and 27, 30 seconds inside between the two, um, come back out here, lock the nut back down, repin it, you should be good to go. Now if you have absolutely no idea where you're supposed to be, say you, you're working on a basket case car or whatever, you had complete disassembly and you have no idea where this adjustment needs to start out, disconnect it just like we did, loosen the nut, um, have the gear shift lever in neutral, then push the lever by hand all the way back and note how far it goes then pull it all the way up and note how far it goes and halfway in between those two points is going to be your correct position at least your good starting point then you can slip it back in measure inside between your lever and your steering wheel and do fine adjustment from there and there you go that is really it just those few adjustments and away you go I meant to mention, and I didn't while I was doing it, but that lower mast support, the thing I said looks like the bottom half of a muffler clamp. Be sure when you're tightening back those back down that you don't go all Andre the Giant on them and get too aggressive with them. It is a danger that you can actually collapse the steering column tube, the mast. So don't go crazy there. Um, and I always recommend, of course, that for your model a year of car, you get a manual so that you can read about these things yourself. Now they're back in these, in these days, their parts diagrams just weren't always the best. They kind of assumed that when you, they used a term or a name, they knew, you knew what they were talking about. And unfortunately, that's not always the case. But it's still very helpful, you've got your measurements, and you can kind of figure out what's going on. So, be sure you do that. Anyway, that's going to do it for this time on this car. Um, kind of a shorter video, I know, but that's not always a bad thing. Uh, I've got all the raw upholstery that will require sewing. Um, so, we're going to start on door panels and seats probably very soon. Um, just still waiting on the carpet and the headliner that are pre-made to show up. So things will get really exciting here really soon. I need to get set up somewhere in here with a nice table that I can lay out material and cut it and sew it. Um, so be sure you come back for that. I thank you all for watching. God bless you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Mm, looks pretty good. Hey, that windshield looks so clean you wouldn't know there was any glass in it. You said it! <laughs> well, hey guys, on second thought, before I do let you go, I wanted to just mention to you that if you have an individual component on an old car, especially these old stove bolt Chevy models, um, that you need some work done on it, but you don't want to do it yourself, and you really don't have a good shop around you that knows what they're doing, don't hesitate to send me a message. I would be certainly willing to talk to you about it. 
Um, even if you want a whole restoration done, I'd talk to you about it. I may even come collect it if you're not just an insane distance away from Kansas. Um, you know, I'm not going to spend a, several days or a week driving to come get a car, but you never know. But I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, I know nothing is cheap anymore. Shipping's not cheap. Parts aren't cheap. I'm not cheap. Um, but if none of that scares you off and you want to talk about it, shoot me a message. I will put my email down here. I have it in, on my channel under the About section. Or if you look at the banner on top of my channel, there is a little link that says Email. Just click on that and tell me what you got, what you want to work on, and we would go from there. So that's all I wanted to say. Have a good one. George, this isn't the way to act, Drearies. Sure, fire shortcut, my dear. George, watch it. Sure, fire, honey lamb. George. Train, George! Train! Stop! So help me, I'm warning you, George! Hey, these folks need a lift! That's it, George! I'm getting out the shotgun! <laughs>